one of the things that I wanted to be like vulnerable in in this to like present this kind of question to like both of y'all to like answer or share your own testimonies with it or whatever is uh, whenever it comes to in line with this like prophetic words or things like that that are that come out during church services Mm -hmm. I see a lot of times at various churches that I that I go to um, throughout the country and even in other countries, this like, oh, there's something prophetic that the Lord's saying every single week. And I'm just like, for me, I don't know if it's something I need to grow in or something that the Lord's showing me or what, but I'm just like, I don't see that as something that I see in the Bible. That is just like, I, I don't think that, all of Isaiah's 66, whatever books and prophecies were given to him in like sequential weeks. I'm like, I'm sure this was probably over the course of like his life. And I'm like, it it, it makes me question if we receive something on a routine, is it truly something that's of the Lord or are we like forcing something? Is it just a routine that we're going through or what? And so I don't, I I don't know if y'all thought of that, but in the event that y'all had thought of it, um, I wanted to like give y'all the opportunity just to kind of speak into that, like for my own encouragement, correction, anything like that. So I don't mm-hmm. know if y'all have thoughts on it. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, th- I think there's like, there's the aspect of, um, and sorry, as you're thinking, the reason why I brought this up is because I think something that I'm struggling with believing from time to time is like the Lord is always speaking. Cause I'm like, uh, like I don't looking back to like scripture. I'm like, uh, I could see I could see where some people say that, but at the same time it didn't seem like the practice that was in the Bible. So that that was that was a connection that made me go there. So I'm sorry. Let's yeah. Go ahead, bud. Yeah. I mean I think there's like the um what is it? <laughs> speaking in the sense of like like you said, like your you said your grandma said, is am I reading scripture and I'm getting understanding? Is yeah. that's the Lord speaking, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um or, you know, to your question, is it um, like a prophetic word almost or something that somebody receives that they, <clears throat> you know, believe is for somebody or for a collective group of people. Um, I, I, I don't know if there's like how that works sequentially, but, you know, looking at the book of Acts or even, um, you know, you look at Corinthians and how the model of like church and how it was set up, you know, uh, Paul said, if someone's going to prophesy, let them do it until the next person gets something and then the next person gets something. Now, is that every single service, every time we get together, that the Lord is prophesying or the Lord is speaking through somebody in that kind of way? Um, that, you know, I'm not sure. Yeah. But <clears throat> scripture from, because obviously there's a camp that believes that those things are not present today. And then there's a camp that um, believe that those things are today. And so if you are a part of the camp that believes that it's for today, I think there has to be a level of mindfulness um, and, and carefulness in sharing the things that we do share. You know, and I'll give an example. Because I went to a private Christian school, and it was one of those environments where um, the infamous God told me you're my spouse mm. kind of thing. Yeah. You know, those, the only time God talked to them was about their spouse. Yeah. You know, I had this dream. It wasn't just having the dream. It was, no, I had a dream and we were married. Wow. And then you about the, your, your finances so, or stewarding your finances. Yeah. No, it's always about spouse. we're going we're gonna to get married type of dreams. And so, um, so I think there, there has to be a level of mindfulness because yeah. um, the more, <clears throat> you know, the more that I'm, I'm spending more time just, getting in the word this year than I have in prior years. Um, and having finished uh, Romans and going through Corinthians right now, I see this issue, not an issue, I see this thing of where there are some Christians that are weak in their faith in the sense of like maybe don't have faith for certain things, you know? Um, like Paul gives the issue of some people may consider one day holy, and some people are like, every day is, you know, we don't have to, like, freak out and debate about this. Some people could say, you know, we can't eat certain things. Um, 
you know, offer to idols. And then some people are like, well, it's just food. The earth, is, the earth is the Lord's and all this fullness. God made all things, so it's for our enjoyment. But some people may not have that faith to, to eat that. Like He's just giving an example of a modern-day thing that they've went through. So in light of that, um, I think it is important for us to be mindful of who we're speaking with, of who is in the environment that the word is being given, because some people will hold on to that word as you know, absolute truth, and in the case they don't see that word come true, you know, then everything else just crumbles. I'll give another example. It's those moments where you are in those church services and that get guest uh, speaker from far, far away comes and then he makes a proclamation. If you sow a seed for $1,000, you know, this is what God is going to do, you know, and then by faith, because you're believing what he said, because if he has the microphone, you're believing, you yeah. know, he's, and so you sow the seed, and then 10 years later, it's like, well, my finances keep going <laughs> the wrong way, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So all that That's to say, I, I think there has to be a level of responsibility and mindfulness in, in the things that we do share, you know, if you are a part of the camp that, you know, believe in those things, which I'm a part of, but I'm just, you know, learning to um, be more mindful of others that may not see that as something that's present today. If that answers the question, kind of. Yeah. 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 You want to share? Yeah, um, I totally understand what you're saying. I think it's like, I think we are in a generation culture um, where people are seeking those things out. And some people are never satisfied with the last word. Mm. Um, I remember I went to one, I was at this one event and this prophet prophet came and um, it's like this guy, he was eager to get a word, Mm. eager to get a word. And um, and I felt like, it's like, is this faith or is it like something else, you know? And it it got me of like what the prophet said to him. He, and he's like, hey, you, I see that you're very expected. He's all I hear is what did the, what was the last thing God told you to yeah. do? What did he, what was the last thing he spoke to you? Mm-hmm. And, um, and I could tell that he, the boy looked disappointed. Mm. And I think it's, um, for me, I'm, I'm learning and I'm like, I'm asking the Lord to help me. And I'm like, Lord, I never want to cheapen what you say. Yeah. Like I never, I always want to hold and steward, if this is your word, how do I steward it? Mm -hmm. Um, Whether I get it now, whether I get it six months from now, a year from now, whatever, I think that there's a a level to um, mindfulness that when you read the words, Mm -hmm. like some people at the time, they only got one word for a hundred years to yeah. Stuart, one, yeah. just one. That's what Abraham, got. <laughs> Abraham. You know, he stayed on that word. He yeah. stayed on that one word. Yeah. And, um, and there is a, a piece of me is like, I'm getting all these words. And, and, and if they're all different, I'm like, Lord, mm. is this even you? Like, right. it's it, cause it, it can bring confusion. Right. And if I know the character of God, mm. then I know that he is not of confusion. Mm. Um, but there are some times for me, I was like, there's some words that I've get, I've gotten over time. that are the kind of repeat words. Mm-hmm. Like he reminds me of things along the way to bring me back to him. Um, but there's a component, I think, of faith that I'm like, well, Lord, if can I believe if I'm crazy enough to believe that you can speak mm. in this manner to me a lot of times? Hey, I may be. I don't yeah. know. There may be a, a level of faith with that. But also, in my, in my, I don't know if the word, if content, it may be the word or not, enough to, if you only speak this one word to me, will I be able to steward it and value it just as much as if you were to tell me every week? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's just a conviction of that and having the heart to be like, Lord, I want to steward this one word. If you, if you Only if you even give me one word, like, let my faith not fail, my faith not stumble, even if it gets hard, that I will steward it as, as if you were telling me every year. Yeah, and I think there's <clears throat> having that um, distinction of like, distinction. Mm-hmm. what does it mean to receive a word? Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes it's um, you see things just over and over and over and over again. It's like, okay, I just prayed about this last week, and all I keep seeing mm-hmm. is 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 giving me confirmation for what I prayed for. Sometimes it's you read something, and then there's just clarity yeah. for what you prayed for. Sometimes it is that, as you mentioned, like that, 
that confirmation in your spirit that you just know whether it's peace about something or maybe it's mm -mm, nope. Yeah. You know, this isn't the time for you to. I mean, these, these things become personal, but I think when we bring it to a collective in a church setting, in a group setting, because um, <laughs> cause, cause some people, their complaint is always the words that people speak is always generic. Yes. You, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like the people that are uh, part of the group that may say God doesn't you know, speak yeah. in that kind of way anymore. <clears throat> part of the thing is um, they'll say is, you guys are always saying generic things yeah. in a sense, you know? Yeah. And so, um, but all that to say, I, th I think it, it comes with a measure of faith, you know, yeah. a measure of um, having those moments of like learning to hear from the Lord, yeah. um, distinguishing his voice from the voice of another, things yeah. of that nature. Yeah. yeah. And I, a thought that came up while you were talking about never satisfied because a thought that I've had that I don't think I'm going to be able to articulate super well because it's still something that I'm like sorting through is some Christians pursue the Lord as a means to the end of the fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore to where they're not actually seeking the Lord. They're just seeking his benefits. Mm -hmm. And I can't put in an all encompassing way, like the traits that all those people have in common but at least one of them that i think i know for sure is people who love the lord but don't love people because then they're just trying to reap the benefits of being in his presence and all that and then also this is a little bit more questionable and i'm still processing this but it's like those people who only want to be in the presence of god in the church but aren't willing to go out and serve and love people mm with the acknowledgement that I know there are people who are called to be, you know, intercessors in the prayer room mm -hmm. for hours and hours on end, but still at the same time, you know, they got to exit that place at some point because they get, they kind of got to get some, some food or some Chick-fil-A and they have opportunities to go love people. Um, yeah. or sorry, or go get Costa Vida. Um, and <laughs> You just had to. We, we, just we, had to we, we can try to deep moment. I, 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 I will let you address that later. I promise. But uh, hey, <laughs> Josue's with me. But in it, um, you, you gotta, you gotta get, you gotta leave and eventually like go love people. And so, I feel like I have seen this tendency uh, from time to time of people pursuing God as a means to the end yep. of like the benefits that He brings. And those, and in it, where it comes back around to this is. I think how the Lord protects people from that and convicts people and shows people is that those benefits will never actually satisfy because mm -hmm. the one who comes with those benefits is not there with them. Mm -hmm. And he's the one who ultimately satisfies, not those benefits. Yeah. And so I'm glad I hadn't like connected that in my mind yet. And so I'm grateful that you brought that up. Because it's apart from him, anything apart from him, it's like, what is it? You know, like... Um, as you were talking, I was thinking about it. Like I'm a I'm a crybaby, y'all. So I might tear up a little bit. But I just think about um, I always see visuals, and so I think about when you, you were saying that um, a child, uh, a teenage teenage boy, say it's a teenage boy and his father, and the father like really loves his son, and, and the father can do anything he can for his son, um, and the fun, and the son is just very emotionally like not connected. Like only time he will text him every time he needs something, and the father will give it to him. Um, but all the father wants is just that connection. And then that, that son um, feels the disconnect as well, but doesn't know how to articulate it. But on, like, the, the only solution, um, the solution that he, that he wants and needs it will come from just being in his father's presence, just sitting with him. I'm not texting him, I'm not asking him for something, but literally just being there. And I, I just saw that piece of like, man, the father wants to connect, the son wants to connect, but sometimes there's this, dis this disconnect between the two because the son doesn't know how to just sit in his father's presence. Um, and I've, 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 I've learned that um, with my past and my father and learning what God the father looks like. Um, Cause I was afraid to come to him. Like I was like, I oh, don't know about this. I'm just going. Lord, thank you for everything you've done. But what I've one thing I've grown to know is like, man, like you care much more about me being with you than anything else that you can offer me. Um, and there's many, there's been many times where you've held some things. It wasn't like out of um, 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 punishment, but it was like 
if I give this to you, you're just going to run to it. Like, you're not going to run to me. Um, and so I think it's just ultimately, like, it's, like you said, you hear people say, oh, it's about relationship. It truly is. Like, it's truly about relationship. And I think about Jesus when he was here. Like, every time he did something, he went right back to the Father. You know, like, he knew he knew where his source came from. He knew where his well came from every single time. And I'm like, if I, if I, no matter how many pastors, no matter how many people are in my life, I know that I have a true example, which is Jesus. And he lived it. So I know if I, if I miss my way, I can look back to Jesus and what he did. And he did it every single time. Yeah. And before, and I'm, you'll have something to say, but before we leave the topic about like prophetic words and how to handle just that realm of things, I want to encourage and honor you and the rest of the friend group with an axel and just our wider friend group because um you know i feel like it's easy for christians to talk a lot of the time about you know issues or struggles or problems they see with the church or other christians but not honor those who they see it do, being handled well in mm -hmm. and so before we leave that i just want to honor like you and the like y'all axel fam like the rest of our friend group like i see us handling it well and in a mm -hmm. mature way not just in a um light and butterflies and oh this is so cool kind of way but with like the weight that it comes with so. that's real like it's been so like um encouraging to like be around people like our age and to see honor amongst us like it's it's insane like that I, to see how people how we navigate spaces and like you say, like honor the people that we're around or the churches that we're serving or the people group that we're around. Like it's, it's beautiful. Like I know some, some set of people who don't do that, you know, they'll dog you, you know, or they'll whatever, but it's just beautiful. I'm like, man, like, Lord, thank you for surrounding me with people that know how to honor you, know how to honor your people, no matter what the situation and circumstance may be. So it's a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. And it, <clears throat> it made me think of like, um, on my, I, yeah, it was today on my way to work. Mm -hmm. I was driving, and um, I think I was praying at the time. But I, I came to a stop sign, and I love you. You ever, you ever just see when birds are all just hanging out in one spot? Yeah. Yeah, they were, like, all over the lights, all over the building right next to us, and just hanging out there. Um, but it made me think about, you know, the verse about, you know, God being able to take care of, mm -hmm. you know, the birds and, and things like that. And it was just such a... Um, mm -hmm. small moment of the Lord like reminding me mm -hmm. of look at these birds they don't have 401ks they don't <laughs> they, they don't. go to school you know what I'm saying <laughs> like I literally sat there for sure? <laughs> not that I know of you know I, I sat there for yeah, man, a good amount to, of time really thinking about, about that. it not uh, big yeah, big bird. Bird. <laughs> I said I sat there for a good amount of time thinking about it like these birds don't do nothing mm -mm. you know and then but he takes care of them, you know, and, and I was just like, man, like, why, why, why do I, or why do we, why do I fall into those moments where it's like, man, Lord, are you really going to come through? <laughs> yeah. You know, but it's a simple reminder of just seeing birds hanging out, yeah. doing life, you know, the birds are, are, are in communion and, and with one another uh, doing life. And I was just like, man, like, this is how he... <clears throat> the Lord takes care of us. And it was that small illustration yeah. that brought up a verse that, that I knew in my heart where the Lord was able to confirm, like, no, I, I got you. You know what I'm saying? To to kind of answer your um, some of that. But I, I've, I've just learned in my um, walk, especially in this specific area, that whenever you're in an environment and it feels like a lot of people are doing things, but you're not doing it, you know, it's... It's it's okay. You don't have to feel pressure to feel that you know I have to give this word or something like mm -hmm. that. It's like it's like no, you don't. You know, don't don't force things. Yeah, force <laughs> you know it. what I'm saying. <laughs> but don't force things because then you're just gonna look, look kind of crazy, you know, for yeah. no reason. So I think it's just being mindful. For me, I'm always. When I'm in those environments, I pray. I'm like, Lord, is there something in my heart? If not, cool. Mm -hmm. I'll be a participant, yeah. you know, I'll receive okay. and, and everything else. But if there's not, then that's okay with me too. But 